So before we proceed any further and animate the blades, let's quickly clean up this pole and this little blue strip here, which I'm sure has been bothering you. I'll quickly select the layer, grab a mask, and there we go. I've selected my bottom blue strip, and I want to come down here and set that mask to subtract. Then the next step is to get rid of this pole. So I'll grab the pen tool. And what I'll need to do here is actually click around the model. And for now, we'll leave that mask to add. And I'll create a keyframe for it here. And then what I'll need to do is step forward a few frames. And then adjust my mask accordingly. And then step forward a few more frames. Drag your mask. Obviously, you'd need to be a lot more precise than what I'm being. And then once you were happy that your mask was following the outline of your model, you would come down here, set that mask to subtract, and voila, it would get rid of your stick. Um, now, again, I'm not going to go through this whole entire painful process. Um, you know, you can see there's quite a lot of work to be done. So I've already done this step, so I'm going to just enable that layer. And let's come back to our master comp. I should probably rename this comp, so I'm going to just rename it here to master comp. Now we're in a good position to animate our model. So what I really want is I want it to rise up from behind my mountain. At the moment it's just static, but it has the rotation from when we shot it. So I'm going to step forward to about 7 seconds and create a position keyframe for it. I'm going to head back to the start of my animation. And at this point I want my helicopter to be down here below the mountain. So if I scrub forward now I can see the helicopter is doing a very really linear move from up behind that mountain. What we want to do is make a nice ease in keyframe here. So I'll right click that keyframe. Unfortunately you can't see this now, it's falling off screen, but I'm just selecting easy ease in. And what that basically does is the helicopter now eases into this final position there. So there's our animation. So it's great now that the helicopter is easing in to its final position, but I'd like to add some sway and a bit of natural rotation and movement to the helicopter. So this is why it was important that we moved our pivot point to where the rotor blades are. So I'm just going to access the rotation properties for this layer. And starting from about here, I'm going to just give it a few degrees of rotation. Let's actually go negative two here. Create a keyframe, jump forward a few seconds. Let's say go positive 1.5 degrees. Maybe that's a bit much, too much sway. Let's go one degree. Step forward a few seconds, send it to negative one. Step forward a few seconds, positive one. And then at the end of our animation, we'll have it, we'll have the helicopter level off again back to zero degrees. And what I want to do to all these keyframes is put a nice smooth automatic easy ease on them, which I'm doing. Sorry, again, that falls off screen. And now if I ramp preview this, now we're starting to notice a bit of our sway, which one might expect if there were air currents or a wind blowing. Right, so I'm very happy with the animation on that helicopter now, which means it is time to do the 3D blades. So first step, let's start a new composition. I'm going to call this composition 3D Blades. And I'm going to just start by putting a new solid into the layer. I always like to just work with a black solid. There's my new solid, and to that solid I'm going to apply Effect Video Copilot Element 3D. 
Now, I've pre-built a 3D model of these blades. Um, I built them in Lightwave, but you could build your 3D blades in any software. I highly recommend checking out Blender. It's a totally free 3D application. Um, the blades that I've built for this helicopter, I've made available for download, and I have put the links underneath this video. So please check them out. Feel free to use them. Right, so let's get started. I'm going to click on Scene Setup up here in the Effects Palette for Element which will open this element dialog box and I need to start by importing my model so I click import so here we go I'm importing my OBJ my 3D object and there you go you can see there the blades are by default if you download these ones that I provided they should come in exactly like this into element now this is a very important step next make sure you have the model selected and down here in the list where it says anchor point the moment it defaults to model center. Very important that you change this to be from model. In the 3D software in Lightwave, I set the anchor point to be dead center in the middle of these blades so that when they spin, they spin correctly. Um, so just make sure you do that step. Then the next step is we need to quickly set up some surfaces for our blades. So I've got these blades pre-split into three different surfaces, a gray surface, which as you will see now, give them a, a nice dark gray color, aviation gray um, is the center portion of the blades. Then I have the blade cap. And let's choose a nice sort of desert sand color for that. Somewhere around there should do it. And a very similar color for the blades themselves. There we go. And then the next step I want to do is add a bit of specularity to these blades. Turn up the specular, turn down the shininess. There we go. Same thing for our aviation gray section. Let's turn up our specular to make things a bit more visually interesting. Turn down the shininess a touch just to get some variation into there. And then again for our blade cap, let's turn the specular up, glossiness down. And there you can see we get some nice interesting light play on the object. So once you've surfaced your blades, click OK and they will show up in your comp. Next step is to add a camera, layer new camera. I'm going to use an 800mm lens here um, purely because I'm going for a long lens look. And I know that 800 tends to work quite well. So there we go, we've added our camera. Now we want our blades to fill up as much as the, of the comp as possible, so I'm going to just go ahead and push my camera in. There we go. So that's an acceptable camera position. And you can see our default lighting setup, what it's doing already. We'll address that in a minute, but let's start by rotating our blades. So I'm going to click on the Element 3D layer. And up here in the Effects Palette, I'm going to open up Group 1. Um, again, I'm assuming you have a basic understanding of how Element 3D works. Opening up the Particle Replicator, and we need to access our rotation property. So we are going to uh, rotate these blades around the Y axis. So let's set a keyframe at zero for Y. Step forward in our animation, and again, this is where you're going to have to experiment with a value that works for you. Let's try 15 rotations and a few odd degrees. Let's do a quick RAM preview of that. So there we go, we've got nicely spinning blades. Obviously we are missing motion blur, so let's address that. Click on our element layer, toggle our switches, enable motion blur, and obviously enable motion blur for your comp, and there immediately you can see we are getting some motion blur. I'm just going to RAM preview a few seconds of it. There it is, looking pretty good. The next step is to just set up some lighting. If you'll recall, our model is lit from the right-hand side and from slightly behind. So we need to do very much the same thing to our 3D blades. So I'm going to add a light, layer new light. I'll start off with a parallel light. A color I'll make just a slightly warm white. 100% intensity is fine, and let's say OK. And you can see now by default this light 
is sort of coming in from the top right. I'm going to go to our active camera here and change that view to top. There we go, that gives us a clearer picture now of the top down view. We can see our light is actually sh pointing towards our blades. So let's just go ahead and move our light so that it is coming in from the right angle. Let's see how that looks. That's not bad, it needs a bit of tweaking. So we want one blade on this side to be in shadow and the other side to be catching light. Yeah, something like that looks about right. And now what you'll notice is the parts of the blade that aren't receiving light are pitch black. So we want to address that by adding another light. This time we'll go for an ambient. We'll set it to a kind of a mild gray-blue sort of sky color. There we go. That looks good. Um, and intensity-wise, let's say around 20%. There we go, and that just provides us with a bit of fill. So we're going to go back to our master comp. Let's pick a moment where the helicopter looks fairly level, like say there. And I'm going to just zoom in a bit. And let's grab our 3D blades. And let's position them. This is important on top of our helicopter. Because they need to be in front of that tail section. So the pivot point for these blades is automatically in the correct position. Let's start by parenting these blades to our helicopter layer. And then we shall move our blades to be sitting just on top of the helicopter where they need to be. Um, at this point, let's just do a RAM preview and see what we're getting. Here we go. So not bad moving with the helicopter right so next step okay I can see I've got a bit of a gap here so I'm just gonna drop my blades down a few clicks just to be on the safe side and now our next step is to give them a little bit of a grade and some integration so I'm gonna apply effect color correction levels and I definitely need to lighten the blacks a little bit there we go that's already feeling quite well integrated and I think I'd like to make my highlights pop a little more like these highlights on the model so let's pull our highlights in there we go perhaps the highlights are a little bit too bright now um, the other thing we can do is add what's called a photo filter I'll go to my effects and presets just search photo filter. I'll drop that on. What, what I want to do is bring in some of this background color like we did to the helicopter. So I'm going to go to my photo filter and select custom. Grab my picker and pick this color out of the background. And now you can see as I ramp this value up and down, it kind of just very subtly tweaks the color on those blades. So I'll set that to say 50%. Let's take another look with a ramp review. So that's it for part two. In part three, we'll be looking at animating the tail rotor blades as well as adding some other finishing touches like some heat haze uh, and camera shake. In the meantime, please subscribe and thanks for watching. I'm Scott Newman. Cheers.